Most newly emerging infectious human diseases are transmitted from animals. The threat is most evident among pastoralists who live closely with their livestock. When people and their herds live as closely together as this, shouldn't human and animal health be seen as one? This idea is the basis of a new approach to health that could transform the well-being of rural communities everywhere. This is Kanawat Mission Hospital, one of two main health facilities in Kotido district, a district of 150,000 people, most of who are pastoralists. A visit here will give us a quick snapshot of the health challenges faced by the people. Dr. Patrick Otto is part of an FAO team developing what's known as the One Health Approach. His interest is in zoonotic diseases, diseases caused by infectious organisms passed on from animals to humans. Most infections here are zoonotic. The One Health Approach acknowledges these links between human and animal health. Yeah. What we really want to hear yes. from you is the impact of these zoonotic diseases. Uh, yes. You mentioned here that you've never seen so many cases of brucellosis, yes, as you've said time. now. <laughs> so I ask myself, why? What brings this? And it's because of their animals' milk, contaminated milk. Mm. So I said, why the, the animals are not vaccinated? And then, of course, you are crippled and uh, assimilating also. Okay. So if the mother is sick, the children are remaining at home, so yeah. they are affected. Okay. Yeah. Many of the victims of zoonotic diseases are small children who work with animals. Hey boy. Here they get low-cost treatment, subsidized by church charities. This one is our patient who is called Keno, and he's seven years of age. He just arrived today. He came today and uh, with great pain, fever, and crippling legs. And uh, when he was examined, he showed us the clean signs for brucellosis. <coughs> he was sent to the lab, and the lab tested him, and he was reactive. <laughs> Young Keno is likely to have contracted brucellosis from the goats he looks after. They need to take food. You know, if you want to try, you know, tell him to walk. If he can, eh? if he can only. No. Okay, okay, he cannot really. Eh? The One Health approach aims to bring together vets, doctors, and wildlife specialists in preventing and treating zoonotic diseases. Apart from Keno, four other patients have tested positive for brucellosis. The information would be of mutual interest to both the local veterinary and medical services, if only it could be made available. 
Prompted by this need for more information sharing, the FAO team is meeting district health, veterinary and wildlife officers. Yes, I'm Patrick Otto. I work, for, I work for FAO in, in Rome. I'm Philip, the district health officer. Okay. You're most welcome. We are implementing a more holistic and integrated um, approach to the management of priority zoonotic diseases. We are using approaches which are participatory. We are engaging with local communities to identify the priority health and livelihoods issues. This means that we need also to engage with the service providers, human health, veterinary sector, and also with the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Uh, this collaboration uh, has been long overdue. Yeah. There are quite a number of diseases that make the jump, actually, from uh, the animals to the, the human beings. There can be a rabies outbreak, but because of the poor information sharing, it may take a while for the veterinary department to get wind of this information. The veterinarians, who are usually in close contact with uh, these pastoralists, sometimes are better in touch on health issues with the community than the health system. So they present an avenue for the health system to actually improve uh, the health of these communities. I hope that we can count you know, on you um, in the Ministry of Health all the way down to the community level, jointly discuss how we can carry out joint one health training for these service providers and to develop really some system that can be presented to the decision makers. Hey. Next step is to introduce the idea of community one health to the people, professionals and pastoralists alike. It begins with listening to those at risk of disease hear their concerns, and discuss prevention. From the very start, we have tried to involve the whole community in identifying their real needs and priorities. That way, they become active partners in implementing the One Health approach. This community is threatened with zoonotic diseases, including rabies, TB, brucellosis, trypanosomiasis, and some old attitudes. They even used to drink blood, and when you drink the, the blood, it raw like that. You feel so good, the whole body, you know. So you turn again. Oh my God, you get to us, eh? Get a marry more. You you turn in a young man. Get a marry you turn. You hold on to what they're giving you, young man. Get a marry me. These discussions with pastoralists, health, and veterinary workers are at the heart of the community one health approach. Are you ready? A pot of bongi tiang. Are you ready to go? What are you saying? What do you want us to, to, to eat? The One Health meetings are highlighting a need for information sharing throughout the community.
By local standards, young Keno's family is poor. Despite the nominal fees, his mother Maria only took him to the clinic after his condition became acute. Poverty and weak healthcare infrastructure means prevention through One Health would be all the more valuable. But how are you going to demonstrate how the dog, that rabid dog, you know, bites a human being? I took a little bit of a child, I'm going to go to the house. 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 The next step for Dr. Otto and FAO is to link the community discussions with government decision makers. They'll be key to the success of One Health. You know, their reports clearly show an upsurge. If there's an upsurge, then we try to, 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 to link up with the districts yeah. to find out if it is an outbreak. If it's an outbreak, we go in yeah. and help them. People are being trained from different schools or in institutions and during the training there is nothing mentioned about One Health. I think the training institutions should start as the students are getting into the school and they are trained until they get out knowing that problems are supposed to be solved as a whole as or during using the One Health approach. Within that, although Cotillo District is actually outside of the no, 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 no. Yeah. We are going to do serious surveillance in the whole of Karama. The whole of Karama, okay. Yeah. We shall definitely use the results of this program elsewhere. We shall put this, the results of this into our strategy. Whenever we get an outbreak, this outbreak does not only affect the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Health, or Uganda Wildlife Authority. It affects the economy, so Minister of Finance should come on board. It affects like the foreign exchange, because even the, the tourists will fear to come. One Health to me means the environment, the human beings, and the animals. We're trying to bring One Health to communities and service providers in their respective daily lives and not just wait for the next crisis to arrive. That next crisis is out here waiting to happen. It's just a question of when. With the adoption of One Health in the community, costly treatment and lives could be saved. Four days after being admitted, young Keno is responding well to treatment. But in the meantime, 
seven new cases of brucellosis have come in.